Good morning, church. My name is Trina, and it's wonderful to be able to welcome you to church this morning. Whether you're watching uh, via YouTube or on Facebook or you're listening on the radio, we are so glad that you have joined us today. Now, things look a little bit different. I know that. I'm here at our Eagle Hawk campus, standing in the wonderful uh, kitchen garden that we have here. Uh, our stage at Juniton is being redeveloped at the moment. So over the next few weeks, things will look a little bit different than they usually do. But uh, what hasn't changed is that we will be together each Sunday to worship God, uh, to hear about what's happening in our community, uh, to hear a message from the Lord and to be able to respond to Him as well. So let's join together. Why don't you join with me today? Uh, let's worship our amazing God in the face of everything that is going on at the moment. We just want to glorify Him and praise Him and lift Him up. So let's join with the team as they lead us now. All that 
Let's pray together. Father, you are so good. We're so thankful for your loving kindness. We're so thankful that in the midst of everything that is going on in our world right now, that we can trust you. We know that you're good. We know that you love us. Jesus, we want to hear from you today. We want to respond to you today. And we're so thankful for the peace and the hope that we have in you. And so, Lord, we pray today that you would speak to us. Would you lead us? Would you guide us? Would you bring us comfort and hope? Would you calm our fear and anxiety? And Lord, would we see you clearly today and respond to everything that you are saying to us? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, it's wonderful to have you with us today. My name is Trina, and it's great to be worshipping together. And maybe you missed the very start of our service and you're wondering, where on earth is Trina? Well, I'm at our Eagle Hawk campus standing in the wonderful garden here, and I'm doing that because our Juniden campus stage uh, is having some work done on it. So it is going to look a little bit different over the next few weeks, uh, but we'll be joining together for worship every Sunday. Uh, if you are new to uh, our live stream, uh, if you're new to Bendigo Baptist Church, we want to make you, uh, we want to say a very special welcome to you. No matter how it is that you're connecting in with us, we're very, very glad that you're with us. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, we uh, encourage you to type a comment uh, in there so that we can connect. Uh, we also have an email, uh, connect at bendigobaptist.org.au, uh, and we would love to be able to help you uh, during the season that we're in at the moment. Well, last Sunday, we had a very different experience. We had our first ever members meeting via Zoom, uh, and it went really, really well. And we're so excited uh, to share with you that, uh, for those of you who weren't able to make it, uh, that the proposals that have been put forward uh, were very um, overwhelmingly supported. And so we're really excited uh, that we will be moving forward now with a master plan for our Eagle Hawk campus here, and also undertaking some significant capital works at our unit and campus um, and we're really grateful for the way that we're seeing God at work at the moment uh, over $91,000 has been given uh, by individuals already uh, at uh, as part of Bendigo Baptist Church uh, so that this work uh, can start and can be completed and we're really thankful and we're really excited at what God is doing uh, part of my role here as the discipleship uh, pastor uh, is to connect in with our small groups and particularly with our small group leaders and I've had a fantastic time over the last few weeks uh, being able to meet face to face uh, with a really uh, significant proportion of our small group leaders. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that for a while now that we're back in lockdown, but I have been so encouraged uh, by the people that I have met. Uh, we have some really amazing people who are caring for and nurturing and leading and connecting with uh, their small group members. And this is, uh, as we've headed into lockdown again, it's just reminded me again of just how important relationships are. As I've been uh, reading the news and, and blog posts and that sort of thing over this past week, there's uh, certainly a sense of anxiety uh, and real disappointment and frustration in the air at the moment uh, in this new uh, lockdown that we're in again. And it's those relationships that we have with one another that can really help sustain us through these times, those people who encourage us uh, in our journey of faith, whether we are very new uh, to knowing who Jesus is or whether we've been walking with Jesus for a really long time, those uh, relational connections are so important. And so I want to encourage you, particularly as I have sat with small group leaders, as I've heard their heart for Jesus and for people, as I've listened to the stories of, of what God is doing in their midst, in their groups. I would really want to encourage you, uh, if you are not connected in with a small group, uh, we really uh, want to help you connect in so that you have the support and the encouragement and the care that you need. So again, connect at bendigobaptist.org.au. If you email us this week, uh, we would love to uh, really help you in that part of your journey. Well, I have some really exciting and wonderful news to share with you. Uh, many of you will know Tim and Imi Chan. Uh, they're two of our worship leaders uh, here at Bendigo Baptist Church. And this week, they welcomed a baby girl 
Bonnie River Chan and she is beautiful if you can see her on the screen now she's absolutely gorgeous she was born on Saturday the 1st of August at 4 p.m. Uh, 7 pound 11 ounces or 3.5 kilos and she's 51 centimeters for those like me who like the details it's always good to know those um, she's absolutely beautiful and we're really excited uh, for Tim and for Emmy that uh, she's arrived safely and they're all doing very very well well, uh, as part of our worship each week, uh, a really important part of that is uh, as we respond to God's generosity towards us, we respond uh, in giving back to Him. Uh, and on the screen now, you'll see some of the ways that uh, you can contribute and give. Uh, if you call Bendigo Baptist Church home, uh, we're so glad that you are continuing to sow into uh, just the great work that God is doing here. Uh, and so as we come to uh, thank God again for all that He has given to us and as we uh, think about the money that we have given uh, as part of our worship we also want to spend time praying uh, for those in our community uh, who are really doing it tough at the moment so will you join me and let's pray together Jesus we thank you so much uh, for the things that we do have to be thankful for today uh, we're thankful for the air that we breathe for sunshine and for rain we thank you for the peace and the hope that we have in you. And we thank you, Lord, for your provision. Uh, even in those times, Lord, where it, it can feel like uh, things are really scary, uh, Lord, we continue to choose to trust you. And uh, Lord, we, we give today uh, knowing that you are worthy of our worship uh, and that you are trustworthy. And so we thank you, Lord, that today is, as part of our worship to you, as part of an expression of our faith and our trust, we can give back to you. Father, there is so much that we uh, bring before you at the moment. Uh, Lord, uh, we think of the people of Lebanon today uh, for the explosion that happened this week and, uh, Lord, just for the devastation that has happened in Beirut. Lord, for a country that is already experiencing so much hardship and conflict, Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for comfort. We pray for healing. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you are at work in that place. And, and Lord, we just pray for the people there. Lord, we pray for the people who know you there. Lord, would you give them strength and joy and the ability to be able to just care for those around them. Uh, Lord, for our nation and Lord, particularly for our state of Victoria and uh, and for Melbourne. Uh, Lord, for regional Victoria as we uh, are now in uh, lockdown again, uh, and Lord, for the city of Melbourne who are just in this really extreme lockdown. Uh, Father, we know that there is a lot of anxiety at the moment. We know there's a lot of fear. And we thank you that you are the God of hope and you are the God of peace. Uh, Father, we pray that you would be at work in our midst uh, to bring healing and to bring hope. Lord, we pray particularly for the most vulnerable in our community. Lord, for our elderly, uh, for those whose health is already not good and who are really susceptible to this virus. Lord, would you bring protection? Uh, and Lord, we just thank you that in the midst of anything and everything that we face, that we can lean on you and we can trust in you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we continue our uh, series on the fruit of the Spirit, Cultivate, and we're really looking forward this morning to hearing from Pastor Dave Gillett, uh, who's going to continue in that. Uh, and as we prepare for him to bring God's Word, uh, we're just going to read together from uh, James chapter 5, verses 7 to 11. So you might want to uh, grab your Bible or open up your app on your phone, and let's read together. James chapter 5, verses 7 to 11. Be patient, therefore, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. 
Well, thank you, Trina. Uh, thank you for leading us in there, and uh, thank you for reading that part of God's Word to us. And uh, good morning to you all, uh, wherever you are. It's good to see you today. Uh, pardon the pun. But uh, we are here to uh, worship God together and to uh, open his word together and seek to understand it today. And I'm just going to pray and ask God to help us with that. Father, we thank you that we can come before your word today. We thank you that it is not academic, that it is not just words on a page, but you mean to speak to us through it. And I pray that as we take this time together in this next little while, that you would bring your word to life for us. I pray that your spirit would be at work. Speak through me, I pray, for your honour and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, <laughs> I'm here today, and I'm a, I'll get something out of the way for a start. Um, I, I find myself up the front, in, in front of this camera again, and I've, uh, I've made a mess of my head again. A couple of weeks ago, uh, when I was speaking, I'd walked into a door just before in the week leading up. And, and it's not that uh, preaching preparation has tormented me to, uh, a great deal this time, uh, but um, just, just so you understand, so you're not wondering the whole time through what's going on in my life, I was... Um, uh, pulling out some roses. A friend of ours had some roses that they didn't want. Alison thought she might like them. And so uh, Monday evening, I, uh, I ducked over there to uh, pull these roses out and I dug around them with the shovel and then I started pulling them out. And they were coming out relatively easy until I got to this one particular rose that seemed to be <laughs> stuck a little bit. And as I'm bending down, trying to pull on it, I could feel that there was a root holding it. And in that moment, I made a decision. Do I stop, let it go and, um, and dig it out with the shovel or do I just keep pulling? Well, of course, guys just keep going, brute force and ignorance, and I just kept pulling, and as it released, and my head's down there, suddenly, I've got a, a rose bush uh, dug into my head, and, and for a moment, I could identify with a crown of thorns, as I've got this rose bush hanging off my head, and well, there you go, I've got the scratches to tell the story. But anyway, uh, today we are continuing to think about the fruit of the Spirit. And as we've done so in the previous weeks, we've addressed love and joy and peace, and uh, they make us feel good. They all, if you, I guess, they all seem like they're in a higher league than, than patience and self-control, which is what we've got today. Um, and... Uh, they're such everyday things, impatience, uh, self struggling with self-control. They seem more like personality issues rather than spiritual things. But it's obvious they matter to God because they're right here in the middle of this Galatians 5 passage that we're, that we're rooted in. And as it talks about walking and living and being led by God's spirit, patience and self-control, are clearly there and they are clearly part of God's character. And I think it's no accident that God is putting patience and self-control before us today. Uh, living here in Victoria at the moment, uh, we need it. We need this to be showing out in our lives. And, and I think this exercise of, of patience and self-control, this cultivating and cooperating with God's work in us, in, in this fruit, is, is part of us showing God to the world today. And so I think it is, it is great that we find ourselves here with these particular things to think about today. Now, I'm going to deal with patience and self-control together because I think one leads to the other. Self-control is, is an outworking of, of patience or, or lack of self-control is an outworking of, of impatience. I, I think they're, they're, they're held together a little bit. And, um, and so we're, lead, we're working with them together. And for patience, other translations might um, use words like forbearance. And that, that word forbearance actually includes the idea of self-control self or restraint or, or tolerance. Uh, another word that might get used in translations is long-suffering. And, and those are all good words to help us think about this idea of patience. In the Greek... The word patience is, uh, is makrotumos, or makrotumia. And uh, macro means large or, or long. And, uh, and tumos, or tumia, means an emotional blaze of, of anger. 
And so as we put them together, we, we get, it, it takes a long time to get you riled up. Uh, I guess the, the picture of a, a long fuse on a bomb is, uh, is a good image to have in, in your mind. And uh, the fuse, you know, you've seen the cartoons where, where the fuse gets lit and, um, and it's going along. It's, it's a long fuse that is the idea uh, of patience. Now, patience is something that we can easily struggle with. In our drive through instant age, we want things sorted out quickly for us and patience or delayed gratification is hard for us and when we're in a situation that is putting us under pressure or or calls for us to be steadfast in following Jesus patiently there's probably two directions of, of temptation that that push at us there is the temptation to to give up to to bail out if there's going to be frustration and opposition and difficulty, then I'll forget it. Another temptation that comes at us is, is the temptation to lash out against the obstacles that are, are in our way. We might find ourselves being impetuous or, or, or hasty or impulsive or reckless. And so there are these two temptations when we're faced with, with uh, struggles in our way. Will we, will we give up or will we, will we lash out? And if we give in to either of those temptations, we've come to the end of our patience. And we all experience that. Oh, I don't want to pretend for a moment that this is only for some people and not for others. We all, in our human condition, experience that. As a parent, I, I struggle with it. I love my children. But impatience and, and lack of control are like quicksand that I seem to just drift into at times when, you know, there's just mess everywhere in the same shape or form as it's always been. And you think, why, why, why? And our patience readily comes to an end. Our, our self-control goes as we, as we blow up or get frustrated. I do want us to understand, though, as we start to think about what patience is, the patience about what patience is not. And patience is, is not I indifference. Indifference is just another word for I give up or, or I don't care. A and that's not patience. Patience takes the trouble to care and to persevere with God and with other people. Uh, patience is also not fatalism. Oh, whatever will happen, will happen. Patience is not laziness either. I can't, I can't be bothered. It's another form of indifference, laziness. And patience is not denial or frustration. Oh, it, you know, it, it's all great when actually really not. And it's just living in denial. Patience is not indifference and fatalism and laziness and denial or frustration. But James 5 is, uh, is the text that Trina read for us, and she wasn't making a mistake. I did want to take us to James, because here in, um, here in James 5, we have some fleshing out of, of what God thinks about patience, and, and it's helpful for us. And, and so if you've got your Bibles there, um, grab a hold of them, and we're going to, uh, we're going to look at them. And, and the first thing that we notice as we, as we look at verse 7, and, uh, and we see it again, in, um, uh, in oh, I've lost it now, verse 7 and verse 8, is this, this imperative word. You might remember when we, uh, we started in this series a few weeks back, I was explaining the difference between the indicative, what God is doing, and, and the, fruit of God, the fruit of the Spirit is indicative. This is God's work in us, producing this fruit. But you see very clearly here the, the balance of the New Testament in the imperative as well. Be patient. That's an imperative. And then you see it again in verse 8. Be patient. In fact, all the way through this, this little text here of James, it, it's all it, imperatives. And, um, and we, need to, we need to reckon with that here. And patience, we see here, is framed with, with reference to God and his work in this world. When we think of, of patience, we, we might tend to think in terms of traffic or, or supermarket queues or or frustrating people around us, or, or even it might be COVID restrictions. But for Christians, there is a deeper spiritual reality going on behind our impatience with people or situations. Because, well, because of this. Because we believe that we are God's creation. Living in his world, under his rule, 
and joining in with his work and his schedule for his kingdom. And so that means for us that our impatience, our lack of self-control is foundationally against God. Do you get that? If I'm brutally honest actually, I suggest to you it's actually simple unbelief in the goodness and wisdom and timing of God in our world. And what we see here in these verses as we are urged by James to be patient with reference to God's, with God's timing, um, with reference to God's timing in his return, is that uh, verse 9, for instance, uh, we see that, that actually our impatience um, leads us to judgment or our patience takes us away from God's judgment. Have a look at verse 9. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. And so patience is a very spiritual issue that has its foundations in our relationship or our view of God. And we we see that in the Bible over and over again. You you go back to to Exodus, for instance, and and the people of Israel have been brought out of Egypt and there they are at the base of Mount Sinai. God says to them, wait for Moses to go up and and receive the the Ten Commandments, what it looks like to live under my rule uh, with me. And what happens? They say, oh, well, what's happened to this Moses bloke? Maybe he's forgotten about us. Maybe he just doesn't care anymore and he's given up on us. Okay, let's get all the jewellery together and let's make a golden calf. Here, Here is our God, O Israel. Impatience led them to that. You see it also in 1 Samuel chapter 13. Um, Saul, the king, he, he's uh, gone into battle uh, and there's all this, all, all this plunder that they've taken and, um, uh, and, and the instruction of God was to, when the battle is completed, wait there in the appointed place for the prophet Samuel to come and offer a, a sacrifice of thanksgiving to me. And Saul, he's thinking, oh, Samuel's not coming. There's a bit of a delay. And there was a bit of a delay. And Saul thinks, well, I've got a kingdom to run here. I've got things to do, places to go. I'm just going to get on and offer this sacrifice. And just as he starts to offer it, Samuel appears in the scene and says, what are you doing? What are you doing? God's told you to, to wait. And so we see in the Bible that then over and over again, that impatience is directly uh, against God. And we need to understand that it leads to losing control or retaliating somehow. Now that that losing control might be physical and we see all sorts of instances where, where, um, where impatience leads to physical retaliation against people. Um, it, It might be, it might be with your tongue or maybe your keyboard, perhaps, um, uh, and, um, and we see that there, here in verse 9, the, the grumbling against one another is, is mentioned. It, it might be with your heart, as you, uh, as you push love aside when something happens and, and replace it with animosity somehow. And it might be with your will. I don't mean the, the document that you prepare for the end of your life, I mean with your will, your volition. And you might ask, well, how are we impatient with our, with our will? Well, when things aren't going my way, we find ourselves having the will to take matter into our, our own hands as we are impatient. Perhaps we're thinking, I'm never going to get the marks I need, so I will cheat. Perhaps we're thinking, I'm never going to get the promotion I deserve at work, so I'll undermine that person above me a bit to be able to get there. See how it works? And what goes on in the midst of that is that we develop false ideals for ourselves. We, dete- we tell ourselves that this delayed gratification thing, this patience thing is, is just too hard. I deserve a break and I'm going to do something about this. And as we do so, we set a course away from God. Now James gives us an illustration here to think about this. And it's an illustration from the farm. Uh, verse, um, verse 7, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives er- the early and the late rains. Now the Palestinian farming experience would have been similar to what 
uh, our, our wheat and grain farmers around here uh, experience. Autumn rains are needed to get the crop into the ground, to get the weeds germinating and get the crop into the ground and so the crop can grow. And, um, but spring rains are needed too for the crop to grow and to flourish. Now if the autumn rain doesn't come, you can't even get started. And perhaps you, the, the ground stays dry and you think, well, I'll, I'll write the year off. I'll, I'll work out something else to do with my, uh, with my land. I'll, I'll wait until next year. But, but there's great excitement when the autumn rain comes and the, and the seed goes in the ground. But then the farmer has no choice left to him but to wait patiently for the spring rain to come. And farmers, I've got to say, having grown up on a farm and experienced this firsthand for myself, farmers must well be at times the most patient people around. Christian farmers must have a real insight in what, into what it means to have patience with God because the reality is we can't generate the rain. All we can do is wait patiently for God to provide what's needed. And many times there, and I guess this year is one of those years too, there, there is a great start to the season in April and May, but, but July has been, has been dry. And I know many farmers out there will, uh, will be looking and waiting for that spring rain to come. It tests their patience and it's hard. But spring rains make the grain fill out and they, and they give the yield of the crop and, and that's what the farmer is looking for. Now most of you are not farmers, but lots of you can identify with that. You, you have sowed something with God. You believe God has put you in a situation or is doing something in your life and you are waiting for that spring rain to come. And it's hard to keep waiting, to keep being patient with God. You, you can sense that there is good fruit there that will come if, if you are patient, if you exercise self-control, if you continue in obedience to God. But it's stretching you. And God's word is urging us today to not give up on cooperating with God's work of patience and self-control building in you. Maybe, maybe it's marriage and you are wondering when the rain is going to come. You say, oh, I've got to cut my losses. Oh, I can't wait for God. I'll, I'll just settle for another beating heart. <laughs> it's not all I want, but it's better than nothing. And I want to say to you, in that and all sorts of other situations, it's not better than nothing. If you are marching on without God, it is not better than nothing. Maybe it, it's staying married. It's not abusive, but it's just hard going. And it feels like the love is dead. And you think to yourself, we'd both be happier apart or with somebody else. And patience is hard. Maybe it's, it's being a parent. And you're feeling like the, just day after day, it's, it's such hard going. And you're thinking to yourself, it's too hard to be obedient and, and patient with God in the spiritual development of my, of my children and persevere in the midst of all sorts of other pressures. How do I keep doing this? I don't know whether I can keep being patient with this. Maybe it's your health. How can I be patient with God and his, and his purposes? How can I not give up on him when my health is in such a hole? In those situations and, and many, many more, we are, we are waiting for the rain. And, and we know that waiting on God in patience and self-control will bring good fruit somehow in our lives, but it's hard and it's difficult. And, and so to help us, as we go on in this text, James says, look, look at the examples that we have um, of patience for us. Have a look at verse 10 as an example of suffering and patience, brothers. Something we see that we can take heart from, that we can take inspiration and be encouraged by. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. And then, and then verse 11, Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job. And you've seen the purpose of the Lord. And so he gives us uh, examples of the sorts of people being used and blessed by God and their patience. Prophets like Jeremiah. I don't know if you've read the book of Jeremiah, but if you want to study in patience, go and have a look at Jeremiah. He prophesied to the nation of Judah for 40 years. 40 years. And no one listened. <laughs> 
No one listened for 40 years. And instead of giving up, he wept over the foolish people who refused to turn from their sins and he kept on speaking the word of God with patience, holding it out to them. You know, James mentions here Job and uh, the story of Job. He, he finds himself lo losing everything. And he's there with his friends and, and they're, they're speaking to him and, and the bulk of the book of Job is these conversations between Job and his friends and they are saying to him, in essence, it comes explicitly, just give up on God, curse God and die, they say. The temptation to stop being patient with God is explicit there for Job. And he hangs on and God brings good to him in the midst of that. And so we are encouraged to, to hold on, to be patient. You might ask them, well, what are the dangers of impatience? What, what, what can go wrong with impatience? Well, there's the physical things in front of us. You, you know, the, the, the frustration, and, and you will have all experienced that in, in some way. As you, as you give in to impatience and frustration takes hold, you might find yourself spiralling downwards and further and further. And, and you might also find that it, that leads to destructive behaviours in the midst of that impatience and that frustration. Those are physical things. But I want to highlight two spiritual things for you today uh, that, uh, that I think we need to think about as dangers of impatience. Two spiritual things that, that sit up there for us. And I want to say simply those are idolatry and religion. Idolatry and religion. Idolatry first. You know, we say impatience is just a little thing. But what we see and experience and, and understand as we look at God's word is that even though it is a little thing, it sets our minds and our hearts and our attitudes towards bigger issues of, of living under God's rule and timing. You see, when impatience sets in, self-control gets pushed aside. And spiritually, we very easily find ourselves saying, we want to overthrow God. Not over the whole universe. No, he can, stay, he can stay as being God over the whole universe, but just my little part of the universe. I want to overthrow God just in, in my little part of the universe. It's not really a big thing. But it, as somebody I read this, this week said, you know, we find ourselves saying God's schedule stinks. And I want to run my universe. God can still run the whole universe. I just want to overthrow him in my little part of the world and we set about replacing God with ourselves you know <laughs> we, we laugh at some of the people and their responses to our COVID restrictions and, and those people that, that seem to be saying um, to, the, to the police to the authorities no we are sovereign citizens and so we will do what we like Oh, well, actually, in the midst of impatience, we treat God a little bit like that. And we say, no, I am a sovereign citizen and I'm going to rule in my little part of the world. Idolatry. Also, religion is something we need to reckon with in the midst of impatience. Why? Well, as impatience takes hold, we find ourselves having the attitude that, that we want God to serve us and, and we want to tell him... What has to be done? Now, that's no different to the pagan religions of the Old Testament. You go back and look through the Old Testament and there were all these gods for different things. Fertility and for, for rain and for sunshine and for war and on and on they went. And the idea was that these gods could be manipulated. They could be pushed into place. They could be moved around by people doing different things. So you could go and, and offer sacrifices to the gods. You could give them presents. You could do other things for them. People gave the gods what they wanted so people could get what they wanted. Does that make sense? That, that was the essence of pagan religion. And, and it still is. Now, now, we think we're a bit more refined than that nowadays, but I, I just want to say that plenty of people in our culture have that idea about God. Exactly that idea about God. That, you know, if I do this, God, you should do this for me and I want it done this way at this time. And actually, I think we can easily find ourselves in the church having a similar view of God as well. If I do this, God, if I give you this devotion, if I act in this way, if I spend my time in these circles doing these things, will you do this for me? 
You see, our view of God is centred around what God will do for us. And impatience with God and his timing will often be at the heart of that thinking. Think about it for a moment though. Us telling God what to do and when to do it? Really? You know, planet Earth is, is like this kettle that I have here. Just, just bear with me for a moment as I stretch this. And, and imagine this is planet Earth. And you or me is like one of these oxygen atoms in here that are connected to another oxygen atom and, um, and which is then connected to a hydrogen atom. Do you get that? And so we are just one of those little atoms that is made up, that goes to make up a water molecule. We are, we are just a, a little speck and we want to be impatient with God and, and tell him what he should be doing for us. I mean, there are, there are millions and billions of water molecules here just in this kettle of water. We're, we're like one of those little atoms that are, make up those molecules. And we want to tell God what to do and how to do it and when to do it. Idolatry and religion, two things that impatience will lead us towards. And so I want to ask then as we, as we uh, get to the, the crux of this, well how then do we cultivate patience and self-control? We, we hear James urging, be patient. We read Paul in Galatians telling us that, that the fruit of what God wants to do in us, what God wants to do in his character to be expressed in us, is, is patience. Well, well, how do we cultivate that? Well, I guess it, simply put, it's a little bit... Uh, the same as what I mentioned a few weeks ago. I, got, I gave her the illustration of climbing the mountain in Austria and, uh, and we were struggling as we were, as we were going along and looking down at, at this drop down be, beside us. Uh, and, uh, and what made all the difference was, was keeping our eyes on that peak there in front of us that we were heading towards and, and holding onto the chain that was right next to us. And I want to say it again here, that, that the way to cultivate patience and self-control in our life is to allow God to captivate you, to allow God to hold your attention and grab onto his word at the same time. And specific, excuse me, specifically with, with patience, I, I want to say to you, remember God's patience with you. That, that's been captivated by God. Remember God's patience with you. See Jesus Christ. Remind yourself again and again of the patience of Jesus Christ in suffering for you. You know, you can go to places like Romans chapter 2 and verse 4 and we read about God's patience leading us to repentance. We look at Romans 9 and we read about God's patience saving us from judgment. Uh, 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 remember God's patience with you. Uh, secondly, in being captivated by God, remember the majesty of God. Remember how great God is. The, the start of the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, gives us some sense of that. A, a God who cares and yet a God who, who rules and is so magnificent and so far above all we can imagine or, or comprehend. Imagine who you think might be the most important person in the world that, that you could meet. I, I don't know who it might be for you. I, I'm not even sure who it is for me. I, I know for, for my wife, Alison, Queen Elizabeth II would be the most important person that she would love to meet. In fact, in our time in the UK, she was constantly hopeful that somehow she would be able to get to meet the Queen. It never happened. She got to meet Prince Charles, uh, which was cool, but she was hoping to be able to meet the Queen. And, and I want to say that, that Alison would agree with me entirely that she would wait any amount of time to be able to see the Queen. She would give all sorts of patience and self-control to be able to meet the Queen. Well, you know, remember the majesty of God. Remember how great and how caring God is for, uh, God is for you and for me and allow that to, to captivate you and lead you in patience towards him. And 
I want to say thirdly, so remember God's patience with you. Remember the patience of God. That's been captivated by him. And then grab onto his word. Thirdly, preach to yourself. Preach to yourself God's word. Don't preach to yourself your feelings. Don't preach to yourself the words of our culture. Preach to yourself God's word that you may hold on to him. You know, preach to yourself with warnings. Go go to 1 Samuel 13 and read it and allow it to remind you of the terrible pitfalls of impatience. As you read the story of Saul, as the kingship gets torn away from him, uh, allow God's word to, to grab your attention with its warnings, but allow God's word to grab your attention with its promises as well. You know, come to Galatians 5 there and, and read the fruit of the Spirit is patience and self-control. And, and, and impress upon yourself, God really wants to do these things in me. That is God's character living out in me and he promises that as I, as I walk by the Spirit with him, he will do that in me. And so we hold on to the chain of God's word and fourthly and finally, practice it. Practice it. There's no shortcuts. You know, there's the old joke that we pray, God give me patience and give it to me now. But there's no shortcuts with patience. We need to be patient as we learn patience and self-control. And, you know, we learn it by, by practising it. I, um, I, I grew up as a teenager playing a, a musical instrument, a, a saxophone. And, um, and I had great hopes that I would just be able to pick up that saxophone and play it and it would all be wonderful, easy. But what I found in reality was that it it took years and years and years of of practice. And and as I practiced, I was able to play the saxophone. And it's the same with patience. As we practice patience in our day-to-day life, or we cultivate it, it grows, it develops. As we practice self-control, we cultivate it. And we do it for God's glory. And so I encourage you today, as we finish, God is giving us the opportunity to cultivate the fruit of God's Spirit in the midst of our restrictions at this time. And let's not waste our situation, but let's use it to display his patience and his self-control to the world around us. And I want to encourage you in that. And I'm going to pray now and uh, pray for us as we finish. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. In our lives, in our situation, in our patience, in our self-control. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day all we need. Father, I pray that you'd keep us from the temptation to impatience and losing control. Keep us from that temptation, I pray. And I pray that you would deliver us from the evil of idolatry and religion where we spend our time telling you how we want you to be God. God, have mercy on us. And I pray that you give us the courage to to live under your rule, to live with your timing. I thank you, God, and I pray all these things for your glory and honour. In Jesus' name, amen. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the world From a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise
Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. To reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation. Jesus, for our sake, you died. again for joining us today we're so glad that you could worship with us uh, if you are watching uh, via Facebook and you want to connect with us uh, please uh, type in connect there and we'd love to connect with you um, otherwise if you want to connect with us uh, the email address again is connect at bendigobaptist.org.au it's been wonderful to have you with us and we look forward to seeing you next week God bless you